This is Riello RDB burner, um, a possible replacement for the F-series burner. If you've ever worked on a Riello F-series burner, it's very similar. Um, as far as the pump and the motor go, very similar components. Air adjustment is slightly different, but basically it's a very similar burner. Remove the case, two screws hold the case on. Gives you access to the flame control, pump, motor. Here we have the pump, solenoid valve, flame control, capacitor, and the motor. The pump is attached to the back of the motor. The front of the motor drives the fan. So when the pump starts, drives the fan, drives the motor at the same time. To remove the solenoid, there's a knurled nut. Take the nut off. Solenoid slides off the stem. Easy enough to get to. To remove the pump, we first have to disconnect the jet line. Jet line comes out of the pump, supplies oil to the nozzle. To disconnect the fuel line, supplying oil to the nozzle, first remove the photo cell. Slides off the back of the burner. Using a 12 millimeter wrench, disconnect the connection on the back of the nozzle line, or the nozzle holder. Disconnect the nozzle line from the pump. There's three Allen screws holding the pump to the motor. We have to loosen those screws. You might want to remove this air cowl here for ease of access, but if your Allen wrench is long enough, you can just slide it through. Loosen the screw on this side of the pump. Allen screw underneath the pump. One behind the capacitor, and the pump will slide off. Don't lose the coupling. The coupling is the connection between the motor and the pump. Without that, the motor won't drive the pump. To remove the motor, First we have to take off the primary and secondary air intake housing. Using a T25 Torx screwdriver, take off the uh, primary air housing. It's four screws for the secondary air housing. You have to take that off. already loosened the bottom screws. This is, gives us access to the fan using a 4 millimeter Allen wrench. Remove the fan. There's a cover on the connections for the capacitor. Take the cover off. Disconnect the capacitor. This just gives us access to the screws, makes it easier to take to get to everything. Capacitor. And there's two screws holding the fan to the body of the burner. To remove the motor, it's easier if we get the flame control box out of the way. You hear a lot of terms for this control. Primary control, control box, black box, brain. 
and there's just two screws holding it onto the body of the burner the igniter is internal in this box so I'll disconnect the ignition wires allows us to move that out of the way motor is fastened to the body two allen screws And there's the motor. Well, there's all your components. If you want to disconnect the wiring completely, open up the access on the top of the control box. There's the terminal strip. Motor, flame sensor, power supply, solenoid, and the photo cell. They're all connected under the cover. To attach the burner to the boiler, First assemble the universal mounting flange by attaching the captive bolt and the retaining nut. Insert the provided gasket onto the universal flange and the universal flange is attached to the boiler. Burner is attached to the mounting flange. And secured using the nut supplied in the accessory package. Components shown on this side of the burner are the pump, the bleed line, capacitor, motor, solenoid, flame control box, and the photo cell. There are two air adjustments to be made on the RDB burner. The main air damper is located beneath the air cover. Remove the air cover using a T25 top screwdriver. Loosen the screws on either side. Remove the cover. The position of this damper is determined by the firing rate of the burner. It is made before the burner is assembled on the boiler and it's fixed. Resecure the air cover. The second air adjustment is made while the burner is in operation using a 3 mm Allen wrench by adjusting the screw inside here. The damper internally is adjusted. This is for a fine adjustment of the air fuel ratio to clean up combustion.
To get access to the nozzle and the ignition assembly, remove the Phillips screws or loosen them on either side of the air tube. Air tube easily slides off, gives you access to the nozzle, the ignition assembly. The igniter can be removed by loosening the tie down screw, slide out the igniter, pull off the ignition leads. To get access to the internal components, remove the secondary air damper. Remove the primary air damper. Remove the air scoop. This gives you access to the nozzle assembly internally. We have a nozzle heater and a temperature sensor for controlling the temperature of the oil in the nozzle line. This allows better combustion and immediate light off. To remove the nozzle assembly, using a 12 millimeter wrench, remove the union, Four screws. And the nozzle assembly can be removed. Temperature sensor. And the heater.